everyone. So nice to see everybody here again for a, another edition of Meet the Creator. I will fully admit, guys, I am sitting here feeling very nervous about this interview because this is one of my heroes I'm going to be interviewing today. Um, I'm actually going to be interviewing Jackie Morris, which is making me uncharacteristically fall over my words. So I apologise for that in advance. So welcome indeed, Jackie. It's so lovely to see you here. Well, um, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Would you be happy to start us off with a little bit of a reading? We're going to be talking about a panda's child today. I would. Um, and Panda's Child is a book that's taken quite a while to um, appear. And Oh, look, it's so shiny. It's beautiful. <laughs> so this is a book that I wrote some time ago. And I found the story when I was out walking um, on pathways that I've just begun to walk again which is curious, I live in Pembrokeshire and it is not set in Pembrokeshire, but it is set in the space between a mother and a child and the space between um, the relationship that humans have developed with the natural world. Anyway, I'll read you the first chapter. She had only closed her eyes for a moment, lulled into sleep by the warm sun but when she woke, the child was gone. The villagers had all walked out into the forest together. She'd fallen behind the others. Tired, she'd laid the child down on a soft bed of leaves and rested beside him. Only a few days old, such a beautiful boy. The villagers searched for three long days. They all knew there was no hope. They told her he'd been taken by wolves, wild dogs, leopards, or the spirits of the forest. When they gave up and went back to their daily chores, she continued the search alone, wandering the forest, singing soft lullabies, hope fading with every hour, sorrow settling on her soul. And then she heard, maybe a stir of wind in the leaves, the call of a bird, Every mother knows the cry of her own child. Again, soft on the wind, again. Through a thicket of flowers, a cave. In the cave, warm, alive, her child. Seven days he'd been gone, seven long days. She gathered him into her arms and fed him with milk that flowed at his cry and wept with a strong, fierce joy. In the back of the cave in the dark she heard a sound. Two bright eyes sparkled. A she-bear ambled out, brushed gently past her, and out into the forest. And this is one of my favourite paintings from the book. It is simply gorgeous, isn't it? It's such a beautiful picture. She, um, Kathy Fisher, um, who um, did the illustrations for this book, is a very good and dear friend of mine. And I think my daughter summed it up the best when she said, um, let's face it, we would all paint like Kathy if we could. The, the layers on the panda in this, the colours, the subtlety, the beauty, the, the, the feeling that she gets into her paintings um when you look at this one the the loss the desperation um but also the subtle hints of what is to come um i just absolutely adore her work yeah it's a it's a curious tale it was really strange um when i found it a, a long time ago um and like i say i was walking on the the cliff path above um White Sands Bay. I live in West Wales, mm -hmm. and um, I'd wanted to. Um, I'd, I'd painted the ice bear, um, the snow leopard, and I wanted to do something similar with a panda. And there'd been a story on the news about a child in Greece who had gone missing, and had been away for far too long. But when they found him, he'd been in a cave uh, with a bear who must have fed him. Um, and I kind of moved that story, which is a familiar one from old um, 
First Nation stories in um, America um, yeah. as well of children living with bears. Um, I moved it to the uh, land of the panda in a long time ago. Um, so it was a yeah strange place to come up with such a tale. So for the panda's child, obviously um, you've written the words and Kathy has created the, the gorgeous illustrations and you seem to be that rarest of people who is good at just about everything you do. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> but which do you prefer? Do you prefer illustration or do you prefer writing or are they equal for you? At the moment, I prefer writing. Um, I guess I haven't been writing for as long as I've been painting. Yeah. Um, I, I want to, um, I'm working on a book of birds and it's exquisitely written by Robert McFarlane. Um, but it's been the longest book that I've ever worked on. Um, and I realised yesterday that um, this book is only a wait when I can't actually get to my drawing board. Once I'm there, I just love painting. I'm just going to tip this slightly because that's the painting I'm working on at the moment. Oh, wow. And what I've, it's been really uh, fortunate for me um, in The Lost Words, which I also illustrated that was written by Rob, um, there is a starling um, piece. But I've, this is my second go. At, what I want to try and do is, is be inside a murmuration and right. try and paint in the sound of the wings. And um, so that's what I'm doing with this. Um, but it's been a long project and I've missed the spaces in between where I can just play with painting and just do what I want. Um, the older I get, the more I just want to do playing and I want to get rid of deadlines and all those kind of things. Uh, but writing is um, it's a different way of crafting and I'm working on... Um, well, Kathy's um, illustrating a book called The Summer Puppy, which is a mm -hmm. strange one that I wrote at a similar time, which is actually a true story because it's it's the early biography of a, a little dog called Rosie, mm -hmm. who was my daughter's dog. Um, so it's, it's a true story. Um, I'm not sure where that sits on the shelves in a bookshop. Um, so that that's another one that I've written. And... Very much when you're writing for another illustrator, you have to understand the space that you need to leave for the other creative person to step into. Um, and it's a balance that I think is helped by also understanding illustration. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is your first time of partnering, Cathy, am I right? It is, yes. And... and um, that relationship came about in a curious way um, given that the book is about the kind of it's it's in a, one of its themes is that dissonance of relationship between humans and the natural world which yeah. somehow we seem to think is some kind of theme park for us to visit and forget that it's actually our life support system which is much more important really um, so um, not so long ago, something that many people seem to want to forget, there was this global pandemic and everybody was grounded in their own home. And at the time, because of curious circumstances, I was in uh, the Cotswolds um, mm -hmm. with my mum and dad and Cathy was uh, looking after my house and my animals in Pembrokeshire. Um, and then shortly after that lockdown happened, well, Kath lived in Australia. Um, she oh. had no home in the UK. And uh, so she, a poor woman was stuck in my house. And I like to say that I wouldn't let her out until she painted this book. But <laughs> uh, like some kind of fairy tale. But she was working on a book called The New Girl for um, Graphic. And I watched Kathy working. And it was really curious to be so close to another illustrator to see their way of working to um try and understand how you know i was looking at the text and thinking oh now what would i do and i was seeing the absolute and utter care she took to tell the story in each image mm -hmm. and i just thought 
I wonder, I wonder, I was really nervous. I wonder if she might illustrate Panda's Child because what I'd, I'd actually written it for me to illustrate mm. and it's the one book that I had a total fail on. I just, I couldn't do it. Um, I, I managed a good cover, which I will pull out at some time when I can find it, but I couldn't thread the images together in a way that I felt was strong enough. But I, I saw Kathy's painting and I thought, I, I think Kathy could do it. And so I had to then kind of, do you want a coffee, Kathy? <laughs> can, can, I, can I show you something? And and then we looked for a publisher. But we were very fortunate that Otterbury Books picked it up. Um, and Otterbury are amazing, aren't they? Yeah, and they have really run with it. They they've understood it's it's the most peculiar thing because in a way it's it's a, a book in three acts. So it has uh, chapter one. Um, it's a picture book with chapters. Yeah. Um, or I would have liked to have called them acts because I think it's a bit like a play. Three very mm -hmm. distinctive parts, but it also has um, spaces where there are spreads with very few words. Yeah. There are some um, where you just have the picture to read. Um, I love this. I love this painting so much. It's it's, it is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And then, so there's one of the spreads with no words at all. And this shows silhouettes at a cave entrance and the boy and the panda are trapped inside the cave. There's no words at all on that spread. And then the next spread, there are still no words, but this is yes. a strange um, painting, which is a series of sword blades that reflects the face of a tiger. It is just a stunning piece of work. And then you have the 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 words are set like poetry. They are, uh, yeah. And that is a uh, a very lovely thing. So you, it. When I was young, I really struggled to read, and one of the things that made it hard was when you had too many words on a page, and no space around them. Mm. So what I hope with this book is that. Um, it's a book to be read aloud um, and it sits in that space um, when children move from picture books into reading novels it's not a novel it's um, it's a short play in a way mm. um, but it has um, it invites readers in of many kind of uh, abilities so you can share it uh, read it aloud and then um, for for children that are com moving on it's like still got all the pictures it's still got all that joy exactly in which, yeah. which they're moved away from you know I've heard parents in shops pick up books like tell me a dragon um, the, the children have picked it up and the parents say no put that back it doesn't have enough words in it and you're thinking enough words yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. What is enough words? Do you, is that the value of a book? Is like it has to have mm -hmm. lots of words in it. Um, so this is a curious kind of. I guess if if a bookshop wanted to place it, it's like a mid grade picture book for kids that are. Yeah, and I have to say, of all of the pictures are gorgeous. They are absolutely gorgeous. Kathy's illustrations are just so lovely. Mm -hmm. Personally, I am a tiger freak. Oh, yeah. I absolutely adore tigers. And I didn't think anybody could come anywhere near your own tiger illustrations. But Kathy has done some beautiful tiger pictures in there. They are gorgeous. She has. And, um, I, I think uh, what she has over me is I think she is more comfortable painting humans than I ever am. Um, I love how she uh, tells the story also in the paintings. Um, I love the paintings that are really worked. And then you've got this one uh, where she's holding the baby and there's such a lightness and a light about the painting um her watercolor 
watching her work, it's it's really strange. It's so different to my own. Mm -hmm. uh, what she seems to do is she will draw and draw with a pencil. Um, and I'll think, oh, God, that's beautiful. And then she'll start painting into it. And then she'll start painting over that. And then she'll rub and scrub back into it. And then she'll paint over that. And at every stage, I think, oh, my God, that's beautiful. She should leave it there. But then she takes it further and further. And I do know that she does what I do sometimes, which is she'll take it too far, Doesn't never looks too far for me, and then she'll rip it up and start again. Oh, But Ooh. I know, I know, that hurts. It really <laughs> hurts when somebody else does it. It, do, it doesn't hurt. It feels very liberating when I do it to mine. Um, but it's that layering, that layering of different things, and she smudges and she uses crayons and she uses everything to make it work. She breaks every rule because there are no rules in painting. That's why we love it. You know, there's mm. no right or wrong way to do it. There's just the way to get what you want. Well, the other thing, obviously, that struck me very much about Panda's Child, I mean, it has a very strong ecological theme. And it's about, you know, living in peace with nature. And from reading your other books, it would be disingenuous of me to ask you if this is something you feel strongly about, because it's <laughs> obvious you do. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah. have you always felt this affinity with nature or is it something that's come to you later in life? Um, I think on a, a non-intellectual level, yes. I think when I was a small child, I was one of the children who noticed the small birds around us, um, birds it was first that caught my eye, so to speak, with their wings, which I've always envied, and those bright eyes, and realising that there is a life there that is just mm -hmm. um, utterly magnificent. And then I couldn't understand um, the world. My, my dad was a Methodist, and he would take us to church, but he didn't force it on us. I mm -hmm. couldn't understand this hierarchical pyramid with people at the top, especially when I looked around and, you know, as a child, when you learn about things like concentration camps, war, um, the terrible acts that people do upon each other and upon the natural world. And um, none of this made any sense to me. And then I discovered um, First Nation stories um, and this belief in... Um, there are people and then there's the bear people and the little people of the air and uh, the weasel people and the salmon people and the wolf people and everybody is equal and everything is equal. And that way of looking to govern your lands, looking ahead seven generations so you're not just thinking about yourself all the time, mm -hmm. that started to make sense to me. And I guess... Um, yeah, you can intellectualise it, but it is a real gut feeling that, uh, you know, humans are not so special. We're not very clever, really not very clever, despite everything we might think about ourselves. You know, And, you know, you only have to look at what's going on in the world at the moment to see what a shameful species we are on the planet. A real fangirl question here. Um, I do love all of your books, but I think I particularly love those where you have partnered with James Mayhew. Yeah, Mrs. Nolan. Are there plans for another one? You know, there might just be. I, should, I should be doing Mrs. Noah. Um, she's a very good friend of mine. I think she's the person I would aspire to be yeah. in her quiet kindness. Um so um, my daughter is a writer, marine biologist, a sailor and mother-to-be. Oh! So, um, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Noah's grandchild might be in the offing. Uh, possibly Mrs. Noah's knitting could be the way to go forward with it. Because um, yeah. uh, as well as uh, sewing, singing and stitching, Mrs. Noah does love to knit. Um, so she may start knitting curious garments for strange creatures, I think. But, um, well, Jackie, yeah. talking to you has been such a treat, it really oh. has. Thank you so much for letting us in and uh talking to us and showing us some of those gorgeous illustrations. And, um, I do hope 
that the new Mrs. Noah doesn't take too long to come into your head because I shall be waiting with bated uh, breath. <laughs> I will uh, I will give myself a, a metaphorical kick up the backside. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm-hmm.